Oh. I'm Reverend Andrew Lee, and I wanted to share a word with all of you on this Easter afternoon, Easter evening. Um, I felt compelled to share this message. Um, I believe it's a timely message. Uh, I'm not normally even on Facebook. Um, I am a member of Commission Baptist Church. Our pastor, who I love and revere, holds a service every um, Sunday, um, 4.30, on Facebook Live himself. Um, we just got through watching his. And um, so th this message is, is uniquely a message that God gave me to share. And uh, I'm just going to get right to it. I'm eager to share it. It's going to be a short, sweet message. I'm not trying to... Um, be anything other than what God has called me to be, all right? Uh, but I think this word needs to be shared. The first thing we're going to do is, is come out of the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verses 14 through 17, or through 18. And it reads, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, right? These are the words of the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you, you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and I do not need a thing. But you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve, salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Verse 19, to those who I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him, verse 21, who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Now, I know on Easter Sunday, we are Resurrection Sunday. We're looking for a message to make us feel better. We're looking for a message about the resurrection. We're looking for a message to give us all hope and tingly feelings. But I got news for you. This message is not for the world. This is a message for God's people. We are living in a time where I believe that the plague that is upon us right now is a plague that God himself has permitted. And he has permitted this plague because the people of God are not living according to the word of God. They are allowing, and, and I'm particularly calling out the evangelical churches across this nation. 
we know that they have not shown love. We know they have not taken care of the poor. We know that they despise all of the things that pertains to the love of Christ, and yet they carry his name. Yet they profane the name of God. They seek money and riches and fame, but they refuse to be honest, to be truthful with the people. They refuse to admit that we're being led by a demagogue in the White House. This is not a political message, but the church has gotten into bed with the politicians of this world. They have accepted the ways of the Nicolaitans. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. I'm not sure why we think that we are not responsible to repent. That we who call ourselves believers in Christ that we should not speak the truth because of money, because of positions, because we may have been promised a position in the White House or the government that we would not tell the truth. Well, I'm sorry, but I have to speak this truth. He says, because you're not neither hot nor cold. And you think that your riches are gonna protect you, but you don't understand that you are wretched, blind and naked. The condition of the church in America today is corrupt. We have preachers out here Binding the coronavirus. We have preachers blowing on the coronavirus and ordering it, demanding it to be gone. But they have not considered that they should first ask God if he's allowing it. That what does God require of us? You cannot bind what God has already loosed. You cannot loose what God has already bound. I'm speaking to the people of God today. We, the people of God, are the ones who will lead us out of this through humbleness, through repentance, and through turning from our wicked ways. Now watch this. In the book of 2 Chronicles 7, chapter 7, verse 14, he lays it out starting at verse 13. God lays this exact scenario that we're living in out for his people and what to do about it. He says, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts. How many of you know the locusts are now eaten up most of Africa, the uh, 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 um, northern part of Africa, right now as we speak, he says, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people. Coronavirus is a plague. The locusts are already on the planet. He says, if my people who are called by my name this is not the world. This is not people who don't know God. This plague has not come upon the world to punish the ungodly or the sinners. People have been sinning since the beginning of time. There have always been ungodly people. 
There has always been those who profane the name of God. This plague has been sent because God is angry with his own people. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and he will heal their land. Folks, we can't bind the coronavirus. We cannot. We, the church, the people of God, must repent and turn from our wicked ways. We must humble ourselves, especially in America. Why? Because as Americans, we believe that we are superior and we are not. We overlook the homeless. We overlook the needy. We walk by on the streets and we see people suffering and we don't care. We know that black folks and brown people in this country are uh, mistreated, dragged through the mud, and we say nothing about it. We know that this government is being led by a demigod and we get into bed with them because they throw us a few trinkets for our churches. God said, if my people, not the sinners, not the drug dealers, not even Donald Trump, he cannot save us from this. Only the people of God can stay God's hand. Only God's children can stay his hand. We who belong to God have to cry out to God and we have to see ourselves. Amen. We have to see the wickedness that we have allowed in our churches. Now listen, many of you know that we have been chasing filthy lucre in the churches. Many of you know that we have been doing things for money in the church. Many of you know that most, not most, but many leaders in the church have been sleeping around with the women and the men in the church. Now we pretend like this is not going on. We pretend like the church is healthy. But the church is sick. Amen. We go through churches throughout this nation. And we see people that are not married, but full of women who have babies, who are pregnant. Pastors who look in this camera every week, knowing that they are sleeping with members of the church who is not their wives or not their husbands. Now, I'm not saying everybody. I'm not casting a net on everyone. But we know this is in the church. I've been around too long. I've seen too much. And I've kept my mouth closed for too long. But God is not happy. We who are called by his name must humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn. He wouldn't have put that in there if we weren't living with wickedness. Amen. Why is it so hard to say to the church, get rid of the wickedness? Stop the wickedness. We got preachers with big Bentleys, Cadillacs, and uh, 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 BMWs and Mercedes. And I get it. There's nothing wrong with having nice things if God gave them to you. But you can't forget who the giver of these things is. You 
can't forget the, your God. You can't pretend. You can't blow on this disease without confessing your sin. You can't bind the coronavirus without first turning from the wickedness with it that's in your own church. We got deacons that are mean as ever. They treat people terribly. We got, we got preachers that are not living any kind of righteous life, pretending. I've been around too long. I've seen too much and I've been quiet too long. Either we are going to repent or we're going to suffer right along with the world. Amen. Don't think that God is going to deliver us and we refuse to repent and turn and humble ourselves. I have not always been righteous. I don't even claim to be righteous right now. What I am is I'm righteously upset because I know the hypocrisy that is in our churches. I see every day what is happening to the church in the name of the church. We are being mocked by the world, laughed at because of the hypocrisy the rampant lust, the drugs, the alcohol, the anger, the bitterness, the envy. We have it all in the church, people. Amen. There are people who literally are in the church who will hate their brother or their sister. Even when their brother or sister has confessed and asked for forgiveness, they will hate and hate and hate. And then they will get up and preach and teach. We got people coming to the church. And all they do is hate. Yes, we're going to make mistakes. We're not talking about making mistakes. This is not about mistakes. This is about an ingrained Sin problem that's in our churches. That God wants us to finally say as a church, we're sorry, we, we need forgiveness. And I'll be the first to say, I have sin. I ask God to forgive me, wash me, clean me, make me righteous, Lord. I am your seed. I am your child. I do belong to the kingdom of God. Jesus is my Lord. The blood of Christ belongs over my, my, my brow. But I want you to know that we can't get out of this unless we confess. All of us, for those I've hurt, I apologize right now. If you are listening to this message and you hate me for whatever reason, whether I've done something wrong to you or not, I'm saying I'm sorry. Amen. Please forgive me. I don't want to hold nothing against you or anyone else. I want God to deliver his people and the rest of the world right along with us. Mm -hmm. But I know we can't get God to deliver his people if we are not hot for Jesus. We cannot be lukewarm. He said, I'd rather you be cold than lukewarm. That means I'd rather you not even be in the church at all. Don't even profess the name of Christ at all. If you're not going to be hot or cold, I'm spitting you out of my mouth. I think God is saying, I can respect those who are cold. Because those can be led to Christ, to righteousness. But those who are lukewarm, and you know who you are. Those who are lukewarm, Amen. you are the problem right now. You say you love God, but you hate the sister over here. You hate that 
brother over there, you're not helping the cause. I just came on this Resurrection Sunday to speak the truth to the people of God. We need to humble ourselves. Amen. And we need to pray. And we need to seek his face. And we need to turn from our wicked ways. Yes, there is wicked ways in the church of God. Yes, we have tolerated the ways of the Nicolaitans. Even if you yourself are not guilty, you've turned a blind eye. You have not restrengthened your brother or your sister. When they talk about that person they hate, you have not said that's wrong to them. When they say, you know what, I can't stand this person. When they continue to backbite, you have not stepped in. You've turned a deaf ear. You are guilty as well. This message is not for the ungodly. It's not for those in the world. They can't stop this virus. They can't stay God's hand. This is a message for the church, the people who are called by his name. Amen. It is us that is on trial. The Bible says judgment begins in the house of the Lord. It is us yes. who stand accused. We got so many churches in this very city. How many of these churches actually work together? How many of you pastors of the churches right here in this city have contacted the pastors of the smaller churches and say, you know what? We're going to come over and bless you. We're going to help raise some money for this smaller church. How many of you pastors, how many have decided that you're not going to go for filthy lucre? It's not about money. It's about the people of God. How many say, you know what? Let's work with some of the other churches in the city, especially those who don't have much. Amen. What about the pastor the, the, who has 20 members who contacts you and asks you to come do a revival? Have you said yes? Or do you put them off year after year after year? I know. You know why? Because we sent emails and we sent invitations to many of you pastors in this very city just to come. And you were too busy. Year after year after year after year. Why? God is not pleased. Amen. Because you got more money than us. Does that make you more righteous before God? Because you have more members than us. Does that make you more righteous before God? I'm not pleading the case of my church. I love my church and I like it to be small, to be quite honest. I don't go to the big churches because I can't stand the idea of those who have so much and refuse to help out those who have little. So I'm not looking for you to come. What I am doing is asking you to examine yourselves. Amen. Are we not supposed to look at ourselves? And see that we have come up short. We can preach to others. But we can't preach to ourselves. Come on. Listen, I've been in every church in this city. Most of them anyway. And I know every pastor and every bishop in this town. And I'm not casting a, a, a wide net on any of them. What I'm saying is. Enough is enough. Amen. Call for healing, bishops, preachers. Call for repentance. Churches. Call for unity. Call for love amongst the brethren. Lift up the smaller churches. Lift up the, the homeless people. Lift up the people who have nothing. Come together and worship together. Share your churches. Share your big, uh, uh, your big steeples. Share, share, share. Why? Because this is what the first church was like. They sold all that they had 
so that we all had everything in common. The churches aren't like that in this town or across this nation. The big churches got all the all the all, all, all the resources. They do the big revivals. They invite the big national preachers in, and the little churches get nothing. Nobody even speaks about them as though they don't exist. But God cares, and God sees all of this. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sins. Mm -hmm. And then I will heal their land. I promise you folks, God is not going to heal the land until we, the people who are called by his name, humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways. I, I, I asked humbly to the pastors in this town, have you gone to a small church and blessed them? Please do it. Not my church, because I don't want anybody to say that I got on here to, to, to cry for people to come to my church. We don't, we're okay. But go to the little church down the street. Take your 300, 500 members and just pack that church out and bless that pastor. Watch him cry. Watch him appreciate what you've done. Could you please show some love for those who don't have as much as you have? Please. Pastors, if you are sleeping around with people in your congregation you're not married to, could you please repent? Please. Amen. Do you understand that half the city knows already what's going on? People talk about it. You can go out on the street and they talk about the preachers who are sleeping with the people in the churches. And yet we in the church act like it isn't happening. It makes no sense. We have to stop it. This is not everybody. I am not castigating everybody. But you know who you are. We have pastors who are... Come on. We need to repent. It has to be led by those who call themselves our leaders. Hey, look. If we want to be delivered, we're on, we're on Front Street right here. Mm -hmm. We all got to confess. I confess mine. Mm -hmm. If my wife there willing to confess. Mm -hmm. I know my pastor confesses. Can you, Bishop, big time preacher, can you confess so that your people can be healed? So that your church can be healed. So that this city can be healed. So that this nation can be healed. We've chased money too long. We got too many cars and too many houses and too much property. And we're not sharing. Mm -hmm. And, do, and we, do you really think that God is pleased with this? I don't. I think God is sick of it. I think he's had enough. I think he's had it up to here with his people who are called by his name, who refuse to humble themselves and refuse to turn from their wicked ways. It's not just the coronavirus, folks. You take a minute and look at what's happening. Australia was burning. California's burning. Puerto Rico had earthquakes and hurricanes. The Bahamas, thousand year hurricanes that shouldn't be happening. Uh, 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 the Amazon burning. The locusts in Africa. The political climate. Economic deprivation 
all of these warmongers who are leaders of countries from Erdogan in Turkey to Al-Assad in Syria to Netanyahu in Israel to Donald Trump in America to Putin to Xi Jinping. All of these people. It's like we've gone back to the 1950s. Why? Because the world is ripe for judgment. And it's ripe for judgment not because of the sinner. Not because of the evildoer. It's ripe for judgment because of those who are called by his name who have wickedness in their churches and in their homes, and they refuse to repent. That's why we are in this position. It's us. It's not them. I know there are preachers out here pretending that because of the wickedness of the, of the world, God has sent these plagues. But think about it, folks. There's always been wickedness. There's always been evil among the, those who do evil, who don't belong to the household of faith. And yet there was peace. Why? Because God was pleased with his people. So he held back the locusts. He held back the hurricane. He held back the floods. He held back the pestilence. But he's not holding it back anymore. Now you who say you are, who, who are Bible scholars, you tell me you can't see the handwriting on the wall. This is not just the coronavirus. It's not just Donald Trump. This is judgment upon the entire world because of the people of God. And we're the only ones who can stop it. We're the only one who can touch daddy's heart, who can make daddy say, you know what? I can't take it no more. I can't take it no more. Like he did with David when he promised to punish David. But after two days of punishment, he said, I can't take it no more. Mm -hmm. Stop. Why? Because he loves us. Because David repented. Because David wasn't afraid to be way up here and to repent in front of everybody. He humbled himself and he repented. And God healed him and brought him back into power. Amen. Folks, we can stay God's hand, but we have to repent. I hope that this message reaches someone out there. I hope that you don't think that I'm trying to be this person who's trying to pull the cover off of everybody else. Listen, anybody who knows me knows. You want to know something about Reverend Lee? Come on, I'll tell you. It don't matter. I'm not hiding nothing. I don't care what it is. I'm not hiding it. If I'm guilty, I'm guilty. God forgive me. Set me straight. But we cannot go on pretending like we're not guilty. Like this is a virus or a plague upon the evildoers of the world. No, we, it is the church people who are having abortions. Amen. Do you know how many church people have abortions? And I'm talking about the men and the women. Why do I say the men and the women? Because the men are paying for the abortion for the women. Wow. And so they're as guilty as the women. It's the church people. It is God's people who are either tolerating sin or committing sin themselves. And I'm not talking about your average day, everyday sin. I'm talking about gross sin for years that have piled up and piled up. Bishop, how many women in the church have you slept with? that wasn't your wife. Over the years, I'm talking about 10, 20 years worth of sinning, and you still think people don't know. You still think that you can be righteous before God and pretend. Well, let me just tell you, the world is talking about it. I talk to people who are not church folk, and you know what they tell me about the church and church people? 
<laughs> Y'all wouldn't believe it. They laugh at us because they know that while we shout in church on Sunday, they'll see us down arts on Friday. Amen. Or they'll be seeing us coming out of some so-and-so's bed on Saturday. People know what you are doing. It's not up to me to pull the wool off of your sin. But what it is, it is up to us to confess our sins one to another. Again, if I've heard anyone, even with this message, please forgive me. That is not my intention. I didn't come on here to pull any the, the cover off of anybody or expose anybody. I did come on here to say enough is enough. The people of God must repent. Mm -hmm. And then God will heal all of this stuff. He will heal the land because of us. But if we don't repent, We'll suffer right along with the evildoers. That is the message I have for today. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And may you not fear getting right, confessing, showing love, working together, unity. Pastors, if you have not gone to the smaller church and blessed them, Without them even asking you, you're guilty. You're guilty of the arrogance and pride that God resists. If you have not blessed someone, some church less fortunate than yours, you're guilty. It doesn't mean you can't be redeemed. It doesn't mean you can't be forgiven. And it doesn't mean that we should turn our backs on you. What it does mean is you should humble yourself and Ask for forgiveness and immediately go strengthen your brother. The Bible says, Peter, when you are converted, strengthen your brother. You who are the strong of us, if you're not going helping the weak, then you're guilty. I thank you. Again, I hope this message finds its home. And for anyone that's hurt by my message and they are tempted to hate me for it, please forgive me now because I don't want you to hate me. I don't want you to go upset God by hating me. I don't hate you or anyone else. I don't even hate the evildoers. I don't hate anybody. I wish that we could all Put the mirror on ourselves and reflect of our own wickedness. That's all I wish. Because I know then this pestilence that's in the land will be taken away. If we that are called by his name would humble ourselves, seek his face and turn from our wicked way. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. we pray and thank you, Lord God, and we ask for forgiveness. Yes, Lord. As your church, yes. pastors, bishops, yes, God. deacons, pulpit workers, yes, Lord. worship leaders, yes, praise team leaders, yes, Lord. ushers, yes, God. people who clean the church, mm -hmm. All those in leadership, we fall down now and confess. In the name of Jesus. We have not been nice and sweet and kind. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, Lord. Yes, Lord. We have fallen the ways of lust. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, God. We have fallen the ways of money and greed. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, God. We have fallen the ways of alcohol and drugs. Forgive us, Lord. Yes, God. We have fallen the ways of hate and bitterness and revenge, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. We have fallen the ways of disunity and separatism and backbiting. Yes. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, God. Father, help us 
we lay our sin at the feet of Jesus. Yes, Father. Forgive us of our sin. Yes, God. We who call ourselves by your name, yes, Lord. confess our sins. Even now, Jesus. Even now, Lord Jesus. Yes, Deliver us, set us free, Lord, as we humble ourselves before the mighty throne of God. Yes, Lord. Heal our land, but only as we confess our sins. Father, we promise to strengthen our brother. Those of us who have big churches, we promise not to ignore the invitation of the small churches who invite us to come do a revival. Yes, we promise to stop sleeping with the people in our churches, yes. those who are weak, those who have uh, 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 no ability to refuse us. Mm -hmm. We promise to stop hating we promise to stop backbiting. We promise to stop the rumors, the nasty, vicious rumors. Yes, Lord. Father, we promise to live a righteous life as much as it lies possible within us. Yes, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to empower us even now In the name of Jesus. to live a righteous life. Yes, God. To love our brothers and sisters. Yes, Lord. To strengthen those who are weak among us, yes, Lord. to bless our neighbors. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you yes, God. and we glorify you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty In Jesus name. name, amen. amen. God bless you. Amen.